Welcome to the uh, seminar on, on uh, land application of drilling mud. Uh, my name is Eddie Fundeberg. I work with the Noble Foundation. And welcome to our, our meeting. Just as a little introduction, oil and gas drilling are really big business in the state. Uh, according to a, a uh, study done by an economist at Oklahoma City University, more than 70,000 people in Oklahoma are directly involved in, in drilling. About another quarter of a million more indirectly uh, dependent on oil and gas drilling for about $14 billion in, in uh, wages and income. And it accounts for about a third of the state's economic input. So there's not a lot of question that oil and gas is big. Uh, and if some of you are from Texas, it's bigger there. Uh, so it's a big business. And where we are in Carter County accounts for more than 10% of the oil produced in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, so it's big business locally as well as, as statewide and regionwide. Unfortunately, with some of the good stuff comes some stuff that you got to deal with. And that's the focus of our meeting today is drill mud. Uh, for each foot of well depth, you get about 1.2 barrels of drill mud. And something has to be done with it. Typically, it goes into a pit, something like this. And then one way to get rid of it is to dispose of it onto agricultural land. And that's what our presentation tonight is about. Uh, the purpose of our program tonight is threefold. One, this is a rather unique opportunity to hear from several sides of this picture. Uh, we're looking, first of all, at a, a scientist to tell us what's in this drill mud. You know, good stuff, bad stuff, mediocre stuff, you know, no effect stuff. Uh, and also, he'll, he's uh, from Texas A&M and will give us some, some of the uh, Texas regulations. Then, from the Oklahoma regulatory perspective, plus the allowable way or ways to apply the drill mud, what are some of the Oklahoma regulations concerning it? And then we have an attorney to kind of advise on, you get free advice from an attorney tonight, how's that? Uh, to tell you essentially what are some of the things, if you decide you want to do it, what do you need to think about? A lot of people kind of do this too late. Uh, they think about what they should have done after it's too late. Uh, the time to do it is before you sign the papers. Uh, what do you need to include in your agreement? The purpose, this program is not designed to tell you yes or no. Uh, we're not going to stand up here and say yes, you should do this or no, you should not do this. We're here to give you information to allow you to make your own decision and at that point, then you can decide how, what's best for you. And the reason for that is that there is no yes or no answer. It's very individual, uh, different people want different things, different people have different risks, risk, to risk tolerance. Uh, so there's no way we can just stand up here and say for every one of you that this is a good idea or this is a bad idea. 